people. What's up guys? It's Mandy from Burko Co. And for those of you just tuning in, I do not live in a hotel. I am traveling and thrifting. But for those of you who are joining back here, thank you so much for coming back. And if you guys like this content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a like and shoot me a comment down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, today we're doing a thrift and travel vlog slash haul. So I thought I would do a hotel haul before we hit the road and go back to Colorado. So we have been in the Midwest for the weekend for a dance competition and it's definitely a very different life than we are used to. It's um, slower paced, more leisurely, and we made a really fun trip out of my daughter's dance competition by driving through a lot of small towns in north central Kansas and south central Nebraska that my ancestors farmed at. Um, they had homesteads. My grandma pretty much lived in that area. Well, she did from birth until death, a very small area of Kansas. So we just kind of made a little road trip out of it. And we had a lot of fun, actually. We did a little photo shoot in my grandma and dad's hometown. I stopped and saw my grandparents' graves and got to show my kids a lot of our ancestors' graves that go back um, years and years. Some of their great uncles who fought in wars and whatnot. And so I think it really gave them, hopefully, kind of a, a sense of some of where they came from. I have all of these memories of this little town etched in my heart. Like I literally still know every nook and cranny. And I felt so incredibly centered and calm when I got there. It was like all of the stress of the world was just gone. Like I wasn't thinking about work. I wasn't thinking about stupid coronavirus panic. Like everything just melted away. And we opened the windows and like let the air flow through and we just country cruise. And I gotta say, it just really did take a lot of stress off of me. So it was pretty fun. We did dance competition stuff. Greg's parents met us down here in Nebraska once we finally settled in in, in South Central Nebraska. And then of course we tried to throw in some thrifting because why wouldn't we? I will tell you guys the thrifting here is completely different than the thrifting in Colorado. Colorado, there is an abundance of sports enthusiasts. There is a lot of wealth there's a lot of volume of clothing. The first Goodwill I stopped in was, it was pretty much a bus, and I'm glad I didn't go with my whole family. Um, and then the second one I stopped in had a few good items, but all of the Goodwills here are kind of like, all kids shoes are $1.99, all adult shoes are $3.99. Those of you who've been thrifting for a while know that that means that there's gonna be some incredibly odd marked up things like Walmart things for $4.99, and then you'll find a designer item for $4.99 as well. So that price modeling concept doesn't necessarily make sense to me, but whatever. So the first store I went into, everything was so ridiculously marked up. There were no, there was nothing designer, like nothing designer. And there were bags that were like, what I would consider kind of low grade bags, like Nine West and stuff like padlock. So it was definitely not like Colorado thrifting or Colorado bins that I'm used to. Spent about 30 minutes in there and I only got two items. And then we went to a different Goodwill. Um, so that was a Goodwill in Grand Island, Nebraska. And then the second Goodwill we went to was in Hastings, Nebraska, that was much better. So at the first place that was a total bus with chained up Nine West leather bags, um, I picked up two pairs of shoes and that was it. So I got this pair of J. Crew like blush pink pointed toe loafers and I'll probably list those for about four. The bottoms are pretty roughed up and I noticed the bottoms of shoes around here are pretty roughed up and I wonder if it has to do with all the gravel country kind of the door, somebody's at the door. Country kind of roads or whatnot. But, um, and then I got these Circus Sam Edelman gold heels. Those are in really good shape too, so I'll probably do these for about 30. So my total listing for these will be about 70. I'll probably earn about 50 and I think my total was just under $8 which makes no sense because they should have been for a piece. Either way, that's all I got there. And you know, if the bins are looking good, I could have paid a dollar for each of those. So seven more dollars than I'm used to, but a new thrifting experience and a paper bag for shoes. So that was kind of weird. Okay, so then the next place that we went to was the Goodwill in Hastings. Pardon me looking over, my kids are going in and out of the hotel room. My housekeeping is gonna be coming in here in a second. We're trying to check out, but. Um, so this one also had like the bulk pricing, $3.99 for shoes. And that must be how maybe all of Goodwill stores in Nebraska do that. I think I got four pairs of shoes. We spent just under 50, I think, at the second Goodwill. And 
Um, I got these Steve Madden's. They're like the platform espadrilles with the strappies. So those will those will go really quickly. I like those. I'm excited because I have these now in black and gold in my closet. So. Next is a pair of Antonio Milani basket weave pumps, and those are just really cute. I like the ankle strap on them. You know, the condition of everything was actually really good, so I didn't have to, I didn't feel like I had to inspect as much as I normally do. Then I got a pair of FSNY, um, and that stands for something that I can't think of right now because I looked it up at like midnight last night. FSNY, it's like something shoe New York. When we comped them, they typically run new about $200, no matter what kinds of shoes they are. And I guess it's a small boutique store and really started focusing on primarily ballet flats. So these are really cute. They've got the snake skin print and then a cute little bow on the top and they don't look like they've ever been worn really. And they are in a size eight. So I love those. I love the bow accent. I love everything about those. I think those are really cute. And then I got a pair of vintage Doc Martens with the cool little shoe things that like keep shoes in good shape. So, I mean, that's a bonus because those cost money. And that means that these were like perfectly taken care of. I mean, like, I don't honestly think they've ever been worn, you guys. They still have the sticker on the inside. They have a lot of dust on them. Doc Martens original size eight. Yeah, these are the old school ones. So how cool are those? are so freaking cool love these you guys so those were $3.99 very happy about those guys so when we went to the second one what I noted was okay there is certain sections I should probably look at the denim because we're in the heart of America so you can find some really good vintage like Wranglers Lee Riders um, I saw Bill Blast there was this pair of chic jeans that were straight from the 80s that were just a little bit too teeny in the way so I would have bought them for myself because they were amazing so I, I peeped in on the jean section and I actually had like a stack of jeans and then they said that they were $5.99 a piece and I was like, nope, not doing it. So the only pair I picked up was a pair of Levi's 550s. Um, they're the tapered leg and they are vintage. And the reason I know this, so I am by no means an expert on identifying vintage Levi's. And if you guys want to find an expert, somebody who really knows their shit, Breezy Von Breezy just started a YouTube channel, so I think you should hop over and say hi to her on YouTube because she's going to be identifying vintage for you all and teaching you about that. But she's kind of my guru when it comes to like vintage, but Levi's is something I've studied a bit. So I've studied enough to know how to look up Levi's to see if they're at least somewhat vintage. Number one is this tag. So the tag is not shiny. It has a certain set of numbers on the back that I know correspond with vintage Levi's. So if you do start doing research into Levi's jeans, you'll start learning a about a lot of different components from the patch to even like on the inside of here, if there's like a side diagonal stitch, the, there's a, a identification number on the back of the buttons. So if that's three or four numbers. So you'll start learning if you do research about a lot of different aspects of the vintage Levi's and how you can identify them of anywhere from the patch to the rivets to the color of the gold stitching. Even the backs of the buttons have serial numbers on them and the tags have certain identifiers. So this upon first glance based off of what I'm seeing, I'm gonna put these as late 80s and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So they did a lot of changes through the years and that's how you can identify what Levi's are what. However, these are in really good shape. They're the 550 tapered legs and those sell really well for me. And they are in a size 14 regular. How cute are those, you guys? And like I said, they had a lot of vintage jeans, but I just wasn't willing to pay $5 a pop because again, I live in Colorado and I pay Ben's prices. So although those were lit, um, none of the Wranglers had the big brown Wrangler patch in really good shape on the back that I was looking for. And then the really crazy thing was they had American Eagle jeans marked up to $15 a piece, you guys. They had Rock Revival jeans marked up to 40, Miss Me marked up to 40, and Silver marked up to, I think, 30. And so those were the popular jean brands that I saw in both thrift stores, and I think must be popular jean styles in the Midwest. But again, the price point was just not one that I was willing to, to go for, so. The next things I found were two, well, oh, this one's tiny two shirts and these are the ones that i'm like okay so these are the same price as all the other shirts they're mark jacobs mark jacobs cotton shirts and there's a yellow one too and i don't see it oh here 
So I was like, okay, new with tags, Marc Jacobs, I'll take them because his clothes are really expensive. So I found them in two different sections and I think these were $3 a piece and they are still adorning the tags. So I don't know how much a um, Marc Jacobs cotton tee goes for, but I do know that their um, other clothes go for thousands of dollars. So, you know, maybe I'll do a bundle for these. They're both size mediums, but I'm just now noticing that they also put these weird colored tags in here and hopefully they haven't put holes in these shirts but looks like they're doing them in the seam so they know what they're doing but two Marc Jacobs shirts it's like a bluish purple and a pastel yellow but again there was a Walmart shirt for the same price next to these two so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do the flat rate pricing but what is this is something that Lauren found for herself and she's going to actually make into a crop so this is a vintage champion extra large like muscle tank and it's super cool love the color of it it's like a teal so she's going to crop that then Greg found a Tommy Bahamas Bears shirt. And honestly, I don't know if that was something that was embroidered on here because I was like, Tommy Bahamas is like a beachy brand. Maybe somebody just embroidered bears. But it says Tommy Bahamas football. And he comped it. And it also says reversible. Re Does that say reversible? Yeah. Did you know this was reversible? What is it? That bears? Oh. Greg just walked in and he was the one that picked this, but I just noted, I was saying that I thought maybe, and so I was saying I thought maybe it wasn't actually a football shirt because Tommy Bahamas is a tropical thing, but then it says Tommy Bahamas reversible. I don't know how it's reversible if you have this on the back, like I guess maybe you're supposed to rip this off, but it does have on the side oh, wow. a bear too, so. That's crazy. Nice pick. I, yeah, I think it'll be kind of cool. Tommy Bahamas is really good quality stuff. My dad freaking loves Tommy Bahamas. I'm confused that they make football stuff. So this is another thing, like we learned something. So I think that's kind of cool. Like Tommy Bahamas has football stuff. I really like the zipper pull on it because it has that Tommy Bahamas signature, like Marlin. Zip it up, it has color in the zipper, it's kind of cool. Oh, and the zipper is. It's got the orange. It's got the orange, guys, look at that. Isn't that cool? So here's my, my thing. If you do travel and thrift, my biggest word of advice is think of the region you're going to before you go. So like if I had really thought hard and long about this, I would have gone straight to plus sizes. I'm not knocking the Midwest, y'all, I'm not. Their Colorado people are freakishly skinny, we are. So we, there's not a lot of plus sizes stuff. So if I would have thought about it, I would have gone straight to plus size because they had a whole rack of plus size jeans at the end when we were so tired. So again, not knocking it. Colorado is one of the skinniest, if not the skinniest states in the nation, and it shows in the thrifting because it's excess, small, constantly. And so had I thought about it, I would have looked at larges, extra larges, plus size to really hone in on that piece of my closet and vintage. I did think ahead of time enough to think about cowboy boots, but every single one of those were just trashed. I did have a fun time with some lady making fun of some cowboy boots that were super duper old with the longest points I've ever seen. I'm not even kidding. The points on the boots were like this long and we were laughing so hard. Me and this little old lady and she's like, she said, do you think that's where the term shit kickers came from? And I laughed so hard and I said, my dear, I think that might be where they originated from was this, this actual pair of boots. And then she called her husband over and we were all just making fun of these boots. She said, I think I'm going to buy these for a prank for somebody for secret Santa. They're actually kind of cool and stylish but I just joined in with the poking fun because they were kind of interesting. Also, if y'all notice my voice is different or I start saying y'all more, I don't know what it is about the Midwest, but they've definitely picked up some Southern tendencies as far as their intonation. They drop the G's. So like I was waiting in line, I was washing the car. My mom still does that. I have put the G back on the end of words, but um, when we first moved to Colorado, people were like, where are you from in the South? And I was like, Kansas? <laughs> But now I hear it when I come back here and I also start to pick it up and I feel like I sound more country bumpkin for a few days. Like, I don't know what it is, but vintage Disney world. Again, for those of you who don't know much about vintage, one of the ways that you can identify vintage eras is by the stitching on shirts. So single stitch shirts went into, I believe like the eighties and then they started doing a double stitch at the hems of most shirts. So this has a single stitch and it has the cutest embroidered Disney stuff I've ever seen. Thinking that's gonna go well. I think it would be super cute if somebody tied it up at the waist and put like a pair of high-waisted jeans and then like a bralette or a cute tank top for Disney. Look at this. Because at first I was like, who's gonna wear like a dressy button-up shirt to Disney? Check this out, you guys. How cute would this be? Boom. Yep. And she vintage, so I don't know. I'll probably sell that for 50. I was shocked that I found Cabby. 
So I did fine square label cabbie. There's like a faint yellow stain on the back here, but that's gonna be very easy for me to get out. And if it doesn't come out, I'll just keep this. But um, it's a size large, which is good because I don't think I have any large cabbie. It has this really cool ribbing on the bottom. And for those of you who are well-versed in cabbie, there's a style number that really helps you with finding stock photos and whatnot. And the style number on this one is 3005. So I'll probably look that up in the car, find a stock photo, and maybe even start listing that on the road. I love companies that have easily identifiable clothing items because you can find prices, you can find photos, it's just a lot easier. Cabbie's really good if you know the style number, which you can find on the tags. And Cabbie does have two different types of tags. They have a square, which is this, and then they have a rectangular one. For those of you who don't know, Cabbie started out as a catalog only type of clothing business. And I think they have a couple stores now in Texas, but they have a very big following, a very loyal following. And my Cabbie stuff, tends to sell really, really quickly if it's the square tag. I didn't know about the square tag versus the other tag when I first started with this, and I do sell the others. It's like a black skinny tag, but these go for faster, more, whatever. And then the last pair of pants that I did pick up because I could justify spending $5 on these were a pair of Eileen Fisher size 12 navy skinny jeans. I'm like these are on trend. They're a larger size for my closet that I don't have a lot of. They're in great shape other than they just need defuzzed. I think I did pretty well. Each of these items we should be able to sell anywhere from 30 to 50 and our total cost for this Goodwill was 50. Um, it was really interesting though because we did have Greg's parents with us for the second thrift trip and his mom said the same thing as I did. She goes, because she's been thrifting in Colorado with us and she knows how amazing it is. So even though they haven't been out for some years now, she remembers the amazing thrifting that was in Colorado. And as soon as we left, she goes, I think a lot of that stuff was pretty marked up. How do you feel? And I'm like, sis, that's exactly how I feel. Marked up for Jesus. But if you dig and you know your brands and you know what you're looking for, you can find some cool stuff. We really enjoyed ourselves. So that's my baby hotel travel haul. We are getting ready to hit the road and head back to Colorado this morning, but we're gonna stop in a Salvation Army for half a second because they're the only thrift store that's open on Sundays and they're only open for like another 30 minutes. So we'll go pop in there, see if there's anything nice and then hit the road. I hope you guys enjoyed my little baby haul from middle of nowhere, just kidding, <laughs> middle of America, Goodwills. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time stay tuned i think my next video is going to be another b and g unboxing if i remember right so yeah i'm doing more unboxings and more haul videos so let me know if you guys like those or if there's something else you want to see i want to make content that people like to watch so your feedback is very valuable to me so we will see you guys next time thank you for watching my haul and check out my tupac shirt that i bought on poshmark yes shows off those old lady bat wings really well Bye guys. All right, we're gonna check out this little place real quick and stand out here in the noise and try to vlog because I couldn't do it in the car, so. So that was not a thrift store. That was a church. So we didn't go shopping, but I did meet an amazing lady named Cynthia, who goes by Cindy. And she was definitely the highlight of my day. I wish I had a picture of me chatting with her, but I do not. So, cool lady. She was really cool. She's had a hard life. She's got a lot of gratitude, a lot of Jesus, and brought me to tears. So, very, very grateful that I got to meet her. It was a very meaningful moment in my day.